Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for this ministry. Uh, thank you for the, the heart behind what you do. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. You know, this is Good Friday, the last Friday before we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And all of this week, I've been talking about the resurrection of Jesus, not necessarily just the details of how He rose from the dead, but talking about the benefit that this has to us. And I've talked a lot of things. I studied through every verse of 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 15. And then yesterday, I started sharing something that I've written a little booklet about entitled, Are You Satisfied with Jesus? And that may sound like a statement that m most people say, well, of course I'm satisfied with Jesus. But the truth is, most of us aren't satisfied with knowing Jesus by faith. We want some kind of a physical thing. Most people would love to have been a disciple of Jesus. But I was showing you yesterday from John chapter 14 that His own disciples, when He said, if you've seen Me, you've seen the Father, Philip came up and said, Lord, show us the Father. He just said, you've seen me. You've seen the Father. And they said, no, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Since they couldn't see with their eyes the Heavenly Father, you could say this, they weren't satisfied with Jesus. And it was because they were trying to connect with God on some physical, natural level through sight, through feeling. And sad to say, this is where most Christians are, but the truth is, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith, it's impossible to please God. God wants us to know Him by faith, not by sight, not by feeling. And I know that's disappointing to some people, but really, if you understand it correctly, we actually can know God better through the Spirit, through the revelation, of the Holy Spirit enlightening the Word and teaching us things, we can know God better that way than if we were to physically contact Him. And I know that that's a startling statement to a lot of people. Let me illustrate this. One of my favorite passages of Scripture in the Bible is in Luke chapter 24. God used this in my life probably 45 years ago to just totally change what I was looking for. And it has become an important part of what he told me. But this is about after his resurrection, the first part of chapter 24 talks about the resurrection, the women going to the tomb and uh, Mary recognizing who Jesus was. And then it says in verse 13, and behold, two of them went that same day, the same day as the resurrection, the resurrection morning, to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all of these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus Himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holden that they should not know Him. Man, I could spend an hour explaining that. Why couldn't they behold Him? As you go on through this story, He was still the same. He still looked the same. Matter of fact, Later, He appeared unto His disciples this same day, and they were shocked to see Him. They had the doors locked, the windows locked, and Jesus in His resurrected body was able to just appear in the room. There weren't the same limitations on His resurrection body that there was on His physical body. But when He appeared, they didn't believe. They thought it was a spirit. And He says, touch me, feel. A spirit doesn't have flesh and bone the way that I have. And then he said, look in my hands and see the print of the nails and thrust your hand into my side. Get the difference? Put your finger into the print of the nail, but thrust your hand. Man, that was some wound that he had in his side. So he had a physical body. He, he still was the same, but some reason they couldn't recognize him. Their eyes were holding that they couldn't know Him. Let me just turn over and read in Mark chapter 16. This is the exact same instance that's being recorded, but the whole experience of Him walking on the road to Emmaus with these two disciples in, is condensed into one verse in Mark chapter 16. And here's what it says. It says, After that He appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. 
SO THE REASON THEY DIDN'T BEHOLD HIM BECAUSE HE WAS IN ANOTHER FORM. THAT DIDN'T MEAN THAT HE DIDN'T LOOK HUMAN OR THAT HE LOOKED LIKE A DIFFERENT HUMAN BECAUSE, AGAIN, HE STILL HAD THE PRINT OF THE NAILS IN HIS HANDS. HE STILL HAD THE SIDE, THE HOLE IN HIS SIDE WHERE THEY THRUST THE SPEAR IN. HE STILL WAS THE SAME, BUT SOMEHOW THEY COULDN'T RECOGNIZE HIM. AND LET ME JUST JUMP AHEAD AND SAY THAT THE REASON THEY COULDN'T IS BECAUSE HE HAD A GLORIFIED SPIRITUAL BODY. AND IT SAYS IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 14, THAT THE NATURAL MAN CANNOT RECEIVE THE THINGS OF THE SPIRIT OF GOD BECAUSE THEY ARE FOOLISHNESS UNTO HIM, NEITHER CAN HE KNOW THEM BECAUSE THEY ARE SPIRITUALLY DISCERNED. YOU HAVE TO DISCERN SPIRITUAL THINGS BY YOUR SPIRIT, NOT BY YOUR FIVE SENSES. WHEN JESUS WAS HERE ON THE EARTH DURING HIS EARTHLY MINISTRY, YOU COULD PERCEIVE HIM WITH YOUR FIVE SENSES. HE HAD A PHYSICAL BODY. THESE DISCIPLES COULD TELL YOU WHAT HE LOOKED LIKE, HOW TALL HE WAS, WHAT HIS HAIR COLOR WAS, WHAT HIS EYES LOOKED LIKE. THEY COULD TELL YOU ABOUT HIS MANNERISMS. THEY KNEW HIM IN THE NATURAL, BUT THEY DIDN'T REALLY KNOW HIM. THAT'S THE REASON PHILIP SAID, SHOW US THE FATHER AND WE'LL BE SATISFIED. THEY DIDN'T KNOW HIM SPIRITUALLY. AND THAT WAS THE SAME THING HERE. THESE TWO DISCIPLES HAD NOT BEEN BORN AGAIN YET. THEY HADN'T RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT YET, AND THEY COULD NOT DISCERN HIM BECAUSE HE WAS SPIRITUAL NOW INSTEAD OF PHYSICAL. AND SO THE STORY GOES ON. JUST FOR TIME'S SAKE, I'M GOING TO RECITE A LOT OF THIS. BUT HE BEGAN TO TALK TO HIM. AND HE SAID, WHAT KIND OF COMMUNICATIONS ARE THESE THAT YOU HAVE AND ARE SAD? YOU KNOW WHAT THEY WERE TALKING ABOUT? THEY WERE TALKING ABOUT THE RESURRECTION OF JESUS. THEY HAD HEARD THE REPORT THAT HE HAD BEEN RAISED FROM THE DEAD, BUT THEY WERE STRUGGLING TO BELIEVE IT. AND BECAUSE OF IT, THEY WERE SAD. THEY WERE SAYING, HOW COULD THIS BE? AND HERE WAS JESUS, THE ONE THAT THEY WANTED TO SEE RESURRECTED, TALKING TO HIM, AND THEY DIDN'T EVEN RECOGNIZE HIM. YOU KNOW, LET ME JUST POINT OUT THAT THERE ARE SOME OF YOU PRAYING, AND, OH, GOD, PLEASE DO SOMETHING. OH, GOD, REVEAL YOURSELF TO ME. AND HE LIVES ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. AND THIS IS HIS WORD, AND THE HOLY SPIRIT IS SENT TO REVEAL IT. BUT WE JUST DON'T APPRECIATE WHAT WE'VE GOT. WE AREN'T RECOGNIZING WHAT WE'VE GOT. WE'RE WANTING SOME AUDIBLE VOICE, SOME PHYSICAL MANIFESTATION INSTEAD OF THE WAY THAT GOD HAS CHOSEN TO COMMUNICATE WITH US. AND WE'RE MISSING OUT. GOD WILL NEVER LEAVE US NOR FORSAKE US. AND YET THERE'S PEOPLE THAT JUST CONSTANTLY TALK ABOUT FEELING LONELY. DID YOU KNOW, SINCE I GOT THIS REVELATION, I HAVE NEVER, EVER, EVER FELT LONELY. AND I HAVE BEEN ALONE, AND I HAVE BEEN ISOLATED. I WAS IN VIETNAM, CUT OFF FROM ANYBODY THAT I KNEW AND LOVED, AND THE PEOPLE AROUND ME THOUGHT I WAS A RELIGIOUS FANATIC. AND uh, I ACTUALLY HAD MY CHAPLAIN COME AND PUT ME ON A SPECIAL PLACE, AND HE SAID, THIS BOY'S TOO religion, RELIGIOUS FOR US, AND HE STUCK ME OUT ON A FIRE SUPPORT BASE. I'VE BEEN ISOLATED, BUT I'VE NEVER BEEN ALONE BECAUSE I KNOW THE LORD SPIRIT TO SPIRIT. I, ANY PERSON, I'M NOT SAYING THIS TO CONDEMN YOU, BUT IF YOU ARE FEELING LONELY, IF YOU'RE FEELING ISOLATED, YOU JUST DON'T KNOW WHAT YOU'VE GOT. IF YOU'RE BORN AGAIN, GOD IS WITH YOU, AND WHAT YOU NEED IS NOT SOME PHYSICAL THING, SOME PHYSICAL PERSON. YOU DON'T NEED SOMETHING IN THE NATURAL. YOU NEED YOUR HEART OPENED UP TO PERCEIVE WHAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT. THESE DISCIPLES WERE TALKING TO THE RESURRECTED JESUS AND WERE SAD BECAUSE THEY DIDN'T BELIEVE THAT IT WAS TRUE, AND YET THEY WERE LOOKING AT JESUS IN THE FACE AND DIDN'T EVEN RECOGNIZE IT. SO THE STORY GOES ON THAT THEY WALKED ALL THE WAY TO EMMAUS, WHICH WAS ABOUT SEVEN MILES. THAT TAKES ABOUT TWO HOURS AT LEAST TO WALK FOR TWO HOURS. THEY WALKED AND TALKED WITH HIM, AND THEN HE MADE AS THOUGH HE WOULD HAVE GONE ON. WHEN THEY GOT TO THEIR DESTINATION, HE ACTED LIKE HE WAS GOING TO KEEP GOING. THERE'S A LESSON IN THAT, THAT JESUS WILL REVEAL HIMSELF TO YOU, BUT IF YOU DON'T MAKE A DEMAND ON HIM, IF YOU DON'T REACH OUT, IF YOU DON'T PURSUE AND TAKE ADVANTAGE OF WHAT HE'S OFFERED, HE WON'T FORCE HIMSELF ON YOU. AND SO THEY HAD TO COMPEL HIM TO COME IN AND TO EAT WITH THEM. AND SO THEY FIXED FOOD, AND AS THEY WERE GETTING READY TO EAT, HE TOOK THE FOOD AND BLESSED IT. AND THE WAY THAT HE BLESSED THE FOOD REMINDED THEM OF JUST THREE DAYS BEFORE WHEN HE HAD BLESSED THE FOOD AND SAID, THIS IS MY BODY WHICH IS BROKEN FOR YOU. AND IT SAYS THEY KNEW HIM THROUGH THE BREAKING OF BREAD. LET ME READ THAT IN VERSE uh, 30. IT SAYS, IT CAME TO PASS AS HE SAT AT MEAT WITH THEM, HE TOOK BREAD AND BLESSED IT AND BREAK AND GAVE TO THEM, AND THEIR EYES WERE OPENED. AND THEY KNEW HIM. 
And the moment they recognized who he really was, not by the physical, but because they saw this is the same thing that was done at the Last Supper just three days before. And when they recognized him by the Spirit, immediately his physical presence left. The moment you get to know God by the Spirit, that is a superior way of relating to God than just through the physical realm. Man, that's awesome. I don't know if you completely get that or not, but most of us are looking for this physical... It, our, our carnal part of us, the part that is just dependent on what we see, taste, hear, smell, and feel, is so dominant that most people don't really honor and esteem faith. But faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Faith is superior to physical sight. And we've got to get to where we put a higher priority on knowing God by faith and start relating to Him spirit to spirit instead of flesh to flesh. I haven't got time to go through this, but if you go through every single resurrection appearance, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's eight times that Jesus uh, revealed Himself personally. Now, there's some others, like in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, it says there was 500 people that saw Him at one time, but we don't have a record of that. We just have a mention of it. But if you look at the eight post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, every single time, they didn't recognize Him. Let me turn over here to John chapter 21 and look at one of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. In verse 3, Simon Peter saith unto them, the other apostles, I go a-fishing. And they said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Now, you might be able to say that he was so far away they didn't recognize him, and it was early in the morning, and maybe the light wasn't bright yet, and you could explain that away. But as you continue in this story, when they got face to face with him, they still didn't recognize him. And it goes on to say in verse 5, it says, Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. This is exactly what happened in Luke chapter 5. They had fished all night long, had caught nothing. Jesus asked if He could use their boat to preach a message, and so He preached. And then after He got through, He says, "'Cast out, launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught.'" And they said, "'We fished all night long and didn't catch anything. Nevertheless, at your word, we will cast out the net.'" He said, "'Cast out the nets,' plural, they had such little faith in what he was saying that they said, we will cast out the net, singular. But when they did, every fish in the Sea of Galilee tried to get into that net. Their net began to broke. They filled their boat. They called them, uh, their partners and filled their boat, and both boats began to sink. <laughs> and it was awesome. And that's when they came to shore. They forsook their nets, and they began to follow him. And so he told them a similar thing here. He says, go back out and let down your nets on the right side of the boat. What difference does it make what side of the boat you let your net down on? If you stop and think about it, this made no sense, but I believe that they remembered something like this had happened before, and they were willing to, to try it. It says in the last part of verse 6, "...they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it in for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord." He didn't recognize him by sight. He recognized him by what he did. He says, this is the Lord. This is the same one that had done this before. And so he said, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked. That doesn't mean he was totally unclothed, but he had off his outer garments, and he put on his garments and cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. And as soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all that there were so many, yet was not the net broken." Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And look at this. It says in verse 12, And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Why would they even mention 
YOU KNOW, HERE THEY WERE SITTING IN A FIRE. IT'S LIKE IF THIS WAS A FIRE RIGHT HERE AND JUST THIS LITTLE TABLE, THEY WERE THAT CLOSE TO HIM. AND IT SAYS NONE OF THEM DARED TO ASK HIM, WHO ARE YOU? BECAUSE THEY KNEW HIM. THEY KNEW HIM NOT BY SIGHT, BUT THEY KNEW HIM BECAUSE OF WHAT HE HAD DONE. THEY RECOGNIZED THAT THIS WAS THE LORD. BUT IN THIS INSTANCE, THEY DIDN'T RECOGNIZE HIM. AND YOU COULD GO THROUGH EVERY SINGLE RESURRECTION APPEARANCE OF JESUS, AND SOME WAY OR ANOTHER, THE PEOPLE DIDN'T KNOW HIM BY SIGHT. THEY HAD TO KNOW HIM BY THE SPIRIT, BECAUSE, AGAIN, THAT WHICH IS SPIRITUAL CAN ONLY BE DISCERNED BY SPIRITUAL THINGS. SO LET ME TURN OVER TO MATTHEW CHAPTER 28. THIS IS REALLY CLEAR. THIS IS ANOTHER POST-RESURRECTION OF JESUS THAT MAKES THIS VERY CLEAR. BUT IN MATTHEW CHAPTER 28, IN VERSE 16, IT SAYS, THEN THE ELEVEN DISCIPLES WENT AWAY INTO GALILEE, INTO A MOUNTAIN WHERE JESUS HAD APPOINTED THEM. AND WHEN THEY SAW HIM, THEY WORSHIPPED HIM, BUT SOME DOUBTED. WHO WERE THE SOME THAT DOUBTED? IT SAYS IT WAS THE ELEVEN. THERE HAD BEEN 12 APOSTLES. JUDAS HUNG HIMSELF. SO THERE WAS ONLY 11 LEFT. AND OUT OF THESE 11, SOME OF THE 11 DOUBTED THAT THIS WAS JESUS. AND THEY WERE LOOKING AT HIM FACE TO FACE. SO AGAIN, EVERY SINGLE RESURRECTION APPEARANCE OF JESUS, THE PEOPLE COULDN'T RECOGNIZE HIM BY SIGHT. THEY RECOGNIZED HIM BY WHAT HE SAID, BY WHAT HE DID. THEY HAD TO RECOGNIZE HIM BY THE SPIRIT. AND SO LET ME GO BACK TO THIS STATEMENT THAT I MADE YESTERDAY WHEN PHILIP SAID, SHOW US THE FATHER AND IT'LL SATISFY US. JESUS WAS A PERFECT REPRESENTATION OF THE FATHER, BUT THEY WERE LOOKING FOR SOMETHING PHYSICAL. THEY WANTED TO SEE WITH THEIR EYES. THEY WANTED TO FEEL WITH THEIR FEELINGS, HEAR WITH THEIR EARS. THEY WERE LOOKING FOR SOME PHYSICAL, NATURAL WAY OF, of RECOGNIZING THE FATHER INSTEAD OF DOING IT SPIRITUALLY. AND IT WAS THE SAME THING AFTER HIS RESURRECTION. THEY WANTED TO KNOW HIM IN THE NATURAL. THESE TWO DISCIPLES, THEY DIDN'T RECOGNIZE HIM BECAUSE THEY... IT WAS A SPIRITUAL BODY. IT COULDN'T BE DISCERNED BY JUST YOUR PHYSICAL SIGHT. I KNOW THIS IS HARD FOR US TO UNDERSTAND, BUT JESUS SAID THIS WHEN HE WAS TALKING TO NICODEMUS IN JOHN CHAPTER 3. HE SAYS, THAT WHICH IS SPIRIT IS SPIRIT, AND THAT WHICH IS FLESH IS FLESH. AGAIN, IF I HAD THE WORDS AND THE TIME, I COULD SPEND A WEEK TRYING TO EXPLAIN THAT. BUT GOD IS A SPIRIT. WE, OUR PHYSICAL BODIES, ARE FLESH, AND THERE ISN'T A DIRECT CONNECTION BETWEEN THE SPIRIT AND THE FLESH. AND IF YOU ONLY LEARN TO LIVE IN THE FLESH AND GO BY WHAT YOU SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, AND FEEL, THAT'S WHAT THE BIBLE CALLS CARNAL. THE WORD CARNAL MEANS OF THE FIVE SENSES, DOMINATED BY YOUR FIVE SENSES. IT SAYS THEY THAT ARE CARNAL, THOSE THAT ARE IN THE FLESH, CANNOT PLEASE GOD. ROMANS CHAPTER 8 SAYS, TO BE CARNALLY MINDED IS DEATH, BUT TO BE SPIRITUALLY MINDED IS LIFE AND PEACE. IF ALL YOU ARE DOING IS WALKING BY YOUR PHYSICAL SENSES, IT'S DEATH. IT PRODUCES DEATH. AND YOU CANNOT PERCEIVE WHO GOD REALLY IS. YOU HAVE TO BE BORN AGAIN, AND THEN YOU HAVE TO START RELATING TO GOD SPIRIT TO SPIRIT. AND IT'S THIS LACK OF UNDERSTANDING THIS THAT CAUSES PEOPLE TO FEEL LIKE FOR SOME REASON OR not ANOTHER, GOD HADN'T MANIFESTED HIMSELF TO THEM. BUT WHEN JESUS WAS HERE ON THIS EARTH, HE HAD MANIFESTED HIMSELF TO THEM. BUT THEY DIDN'T PERCEIVE IT. PHILIP SAID, LORD, SHOW US THE FATHER AND WE'LL BE SATISFIED. THEY WERE LOOKING AT THE FATHER, AND THEY DIDN'T PERCEIVE IT. AND IT WASN'T THE FACT THAT GOD HADN'T REVEALED HIMSELF. IT WAS THE FACT THAT THEY WERE SO CARNAL THEY COULDN'T PERCEIVE IT. IT'S THE SAME THING WITH US. GOD HAS REVEALED HIMSELF TO US, SPIRIT TO SPIRIT. WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, YOU HAVE AN INTUITIVE, A DIRECT LINE TO GOD BY FAITH. WE WALK BY FAITH AND NOT BY SIGHT. BUT SAD TO SAY, MOST CHRISTIANS DON'T USE IT. THEY'RE STILL LOOKING FOR SOME PHYSICAL WAY. IF THEY CAN'T HEAR AN AUDIBLE VOICE, IF THEY CAN'T SEE SOMETHING, IF, if THEY DON'T HAVE SOMETHING TANGIBLE, MANY CHRISTIANS JUST CANNOT BELIEVE THAT ANYTHING'S GOING TO HAPPEN. GOD SAID THAT BY HIS STRIPES YOU'RE HEALED, BUT THE DOCTOR'S REPORT THAT'S TANGIBLE SAYS YOU'RE DYING. MOST PEOPLE WILL BE CONTROLLED BY THAT DOCTOR'S REPORT MORE THAN THEY ARE BY GOD'S REPORT. THE BIBLE SAYS THAT YOU'RE BLESSED WITH ALL SPIRITUAL BLESSINGS IN HEAVENLY PLACES IN CHRIST JESUS, EPHESIANS 1, 3, AND YET YOUR BANK uh, STATEMENT WILL SHOW YOU THAT YOU'RE POOR. AND MOST PEOPLE ARE JUST CONTROLLED BY WHAT THEY SEE INSTEAD OF WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS AND WHAT'S REVEALED TO THEM ON THE INSIDE. YOU'VE GOT TO GET BEYOND THAT. YOU'VE GOT TO GET TO WHERE YOU START WALKING BY FAITH AND NOT BY SIGHT. YOU KNOW, I ACTUALLY WENT AND SAW THE MOVIE 
THE PASSION OF THE CHRIST BY MEL GIBSON. AND I HAD A FRIEND OF MINE GO SEE A SPECIAL PREVIEW, AND HE WAS JUST IN TEARS, AND HE CALLED ME UP, AND HE SAID, YOU'VE GOT TO GO SEE THIS. HE SAYS, IT'LL CHANGE YOUR LIFE. IT'LL IMPACT YOU. SO I WENT THERE EXPECTING TO HAVE SOME KIND OF AN EPIPHANY, SOME GREAT EXPERIENCE WITH THE LORD, AND I ENJOYED THE MOVIE. I'M NOT CRITICIZING THE MOVIE AT ALL, BUT AS I LOOKED AT THE CRUCIFIXION, AND MEL GIBSON per PORTRAYED IT. IT WAS GRAPHIC. MATTER OF FACT, uh, IT WAS RATED R, IF I'M NOT MISTAKEN. IT WAS BRUTAL. BUT YET, AS I WAS LOOKING AT IT, I WAS DISAPPOINTED BECAUSE WHAT I'VE SEEN THROUGH SCRIPTURE AND THE HOLY SPIRIT REVEALING THINGS TO ME, IT WAS MUCH, MUCH, MUCH WORSE THAN WHAT THAT MOVIE PORTRAYED. ISAIAH CHAPTER 52, VERSE 14 SAYS HIS BODY DIDN'T EVEN LOOK HUMAN. MEL GIBSON SHOWED A BEAT-UP BODY, BUT IT STILL LOOKED HUMAN. WHAT HAPPENED TO JESUS WAS FAR WORSE THAN WHAT THAT MOVIE DESCRIBED. SO AS I WAS WATCHING THIS MOVIE, I WAS DISAPPOINTED, AND I WAS THINKING, GOD, WHAT'S WRONG WITH ME? THIS FRIEND OF MINE WAS JUST OVERWHELMED WITH, with IT. BUT TO ME, THIS IS LIKE ANTICLIMATIC. IT'S A DISAPPOINTMENT. AND THE LORD SPOKE TO ME, AND HE SAID, ANDREW, YOU KNOW ME THROUGH THE SPIRIT. THE HOLY SPIRIT HAS REVEALED THESE THINGS TO YOU BY THE SPIRIT. AND you, WHAT YOU KNOW IS GREATER THAN WHAT THOSE DISCIPLES THAT WERE STANDING THERE WATCHING THE CRUCIFIXION. IT HAS MADE A GREATER IMPACT ON ME THAN IT DID THE DISCIPLES WHO WERE STANDING THERE WATCHING IT. NOW, AFTER THE RESURRECTION AND AFTER THEY GOT BORN AGAIN AND AFTER THE HOLY SPIRIT CAME TO THEM, I'M SURE THE HOLY SPIRIT REVEALED THINGS TO THEM. BUT I'M SAYING AT THAT TIME, THEY DIDN'T UNDERSTAND. WHAT I UNDERSTAND, I KNOW GOD BETTER THROUGH THE SPIRIT THAN WHAT THOSE PHYSICAL DISCIPLES DID THROUGH THE FLESH AT THAT TIME. WHAT A HUGE STATEMENT. BUT THAT'S WHAT THIS IS ALL ABOUT. AND THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THAT ARE THINKING, OH, GOD, I WISHED I COULD HAVE BEEN THERE. I WISHED I COULD HAVE BEEN A DISCIPLE. YOU KNOW, YOU HAVE ACCESS TO KNOWING GOD MORE THAN PEOPLE THAT WERE THERE WITH HIM WHEN HE WAS IN HIS PHYSICAL BODY. AND IF YOU COULD UNDERSTAND IT, WHAT WE HAVE TODAY IS BETTER. ARE YOU SATISFIED WITH JESUS LIVING IN US, OR DO YOU WANT SOMETHING ELSE, AN AUDIBLE VOICE OR A VISION? BOY, THOSE ARE SOME STRONG, STRONG STATEMENTS. THAT'S WHAT THIS LITTLE BOOKLET IS ALL ABOUT. I SAT DOWN AND WROTE THIS IN ONE DAY, AND IT'S BRIEF, BUT IT WILL IMPACT YOU. AND THEN WE HAVE A LOT OF OTHER MATERIAL THAT GO ALONG WITH IT, AND TODAY IS GOING TO BE MY LAST DAY TO OFFER THIS. I'M OFFERING THIS AS A FREE GIFT TO YOU. YOU DON'T HAVE TO SEND ANYTHING. FOR OUR OTHER MATERIALS, WE'LL SAY IT'S FOR A DONATION OF ANY AMOUNT, AND WE GIVE IT TO PEOPLE REGARDLESS OF WHAT THEY GIVE. BUT THIS, I'M JUST TELLING YOU, YOU CAN HAVE THIS ABSOLUTELY FREE. I PROMISE YOU, YOU NEED THIS TO HAVE THIS FULL IMPACT. THERE'S MORE THINGS THAN WHAT I WAS ABLE TO SAY HERE, AND THIS IS A GREAT WAY TO SHARE IT WITH OTHER PEOPLE. IT'S A GIFT TO YOU. SO I ENCOURAGE YOU TO LISTEN TO OUR, our ANNOUNCER AS HE TELLS YOU HOW TO GET THIS FREE BOOKLET, BUT ALSO ALL OF THE OTHER MATERIAL, AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. FOR 20 YEARS, ANDREW WOMACK HAS BEEN SHARING THE MESSAGE OF GOD'S UNCONDITIONAL LOVE AND GRACE THROUGH HIS HALF-HOUR TELEVISION PROGRAM MONDAY THROUGH FRIDAY. NOW ANDREW IS BROADCASTING A FULL HOUR-LONG TEACHING EACH WEEK. WHEN GOD FINDS SOMEBODY WHO WANTS TO BE A GIVER AND WANTS TO BLESS SOMEBODY ELSE, HE WILL GIVE SEED TO THE SOWER. HE WILL GIVE SEED TO PEOPLE WHO WILL SOW IT AND GIVE IT TO OTHER PEOPLE. WATCH THE WEEKEND EDITION OF GOSPEL TRUTH WITH ANDREW WOMACK. Discover the power of the resurrection of Jesus when you get Andrew's teaching titled, The Resurrection Changes Everything. Andrew is offering his booklet, Are You Satisfied with Jesus, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, The Resurrection Changes Everything, is available as a CD, DVD, and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Or you can get these products as part of the Resurrection Package in your choice of either CD, 
DVD, or USB from each of Andrew's teachings, The Resurrection Changes Everything, and Are You Satisfied with Jesus? Also, this package includes the booklet, Are You Satisfied with Jesus? The Resurrection Package has a catalog value of $22, but you can receive all of these valuable resources today for just $15. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. I'd like to give you a special invitation to join me on July the 3rd through the 7th for our Summer Family Bible Conference. This is always one of the highlights of our year. We have things specifically for the youth, for children, for the entire family, and we have a musical production. It's just gonna be awesome. Remember July the 3rd through the 7th for our Summer Family Bible Conference. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? We pray that we can bless you with the Word of God wherever you are in the world on any of these platforms. Follow Andrew on social media today. 90% of youth active in church will drop out of church by their sophomore year of college. 72% of college faculty members describe themselves as politically liberal, and 70% of Christian youth will completely abandon their faith. Give your graduate a lasting, firm foundation in the Word of God and their identity. I do believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that there are students graduating from high school for whom Karis is the absolute perfect next step. I knew that Karis was going to be a place where I was going to learn about um, the Bible, about Christ, about God, who I was and whose I was. One of the main reasons I wanted to come was I wanted to get God's love for me and like understand that and like when I started getting a revelation of that and just realizing that how much He loved me, like that's what really started to set me free. When you send your children to Karis, I think it's the best thing that you could do for your child. I know that for me, watching Ashley go through those two years and changing and becoming the strong, godly woman that she is, I don't think she could have found that anywhere else. When I came to Cares Bible College, I get to renew my mind, and now I, I believe that I'm going to be ready to someday me be able to fulfill God's call for my life and to be able to teach other people, to disciple other people. I mean, I love the teaching. The teaching is just, it's, it's blue chip, you know, it's, it's top notch. And then also, you know, it's just like a big family here. I mean, it's, we all care about each other and we all just have a good time with each other. And You know, I strongly recommend Karis Bible College as a place to send your kids, especially if they're not sure, you're not sure what they're gonna need to be doing. Preparation time is never wasted time. This is a college that God has ordained and established for the purpose of launching an entire generation into the world to change the world and to change the way that it sees Him.